Austria is a country that offers a high quality of life and a stunning nature, where people live in peace and prosperity. Austria's vibrant capital city Vienna is consistently ranked first in the Mercer Quality of Life Index and residents enjoy all the upsides that I mentioned in my video about the upsides that Austria has to offer. Furthermore, the central location in Europe allows you to visit not only the eight neighboring countries of Austria, but also many more European countries in short travel time. Nevertheless, as in any country, there are a few drawbacks that come with living in Austria. As part of my downsides of moving to playlist, I would like to address the drawbacks of moving to Austria in more detail. Let us begin with the fact that living expenses are moderate, but not exceptionally high compared to big Western European cities. Expect to pay about 15% more in Vienna than in Madrid, or about 70% more than in Budapest, but about 20% less than in Paris or 30% less than in London. Rents in Vienna have not gone astronomical as in other European cities, and one reason behind this is that about every fourth resident of Vienna lives in a subsidized apartment. The city of Vienna is Europe's largest property owner, and they don't charge too much for their apartments. As of Deloitte Vienna, the average cost for rent is about 10 euros per square meter, compared to 30 euros in Luxembourg, Paris or London. But on the flip side, this means that there is a huge competition in getting one of those subsidized apartments. Especially if you are moving in from abroad, then you have to enqueue in a long waiting list and the chances for you to get a subsidized apartments are low. Austria has the world's sixth highest median income at about 35,000 euros a year, which allows you to cover all expenses and live a happy life. Another point to consider are limited career opportunities. Austria might be the wrong destination if you want to pursue an outstanding career. There aren't as many international companies in Austria as in Germany or Switzerland. People prefer a steady and safe job that equals their qualifications rather than rapidly climbing up the career ladder. So in case you have high ambitions regarding your career and in case your goal is to work for many international companies, then other countries in Europe might fit better. But don't underestimate the high tax burden in Austria. All tax revenues in Austria make up over 42% of the entire Austrian GDP, which almost has Scandinavian traits. If you are making 18,000 euros or more per year, you will be charged 30%, if you make 31,000 euros or more, 42%, for 60,000 euros or more, 48%, for 90,000 euros or more, 50%, and for 1 million euros or more, 55%. This plays against all incentives of earning a lot of money. Once you realize that you work for the government almost every second day, you might not be as motivated to pursue a successful career. The general value added tax rate is at 20% and profits of companies are taxed at the standard corporate income tax rate of 25%. High taxation is a problem in many European countries. In case you are interested in saving some money in taxes, then Austria might not be the best destination. Even though Austria and especially Vienna offer a top-notch quality of life, some expats find it difficult to settle in and socialize with Austrians. In fact, there was a survey among expats which showed that less than 9% of them considered Austrians to be very friendly. And Vienna is ranked as the least friendly city among expats. This probably also has to do with the language barrier which we will address soon. Apparently, the Viennese are known for their grumpiness, which of course is superficial to say, but still there are reports that underline this tendency. On the other hand, socializing and making friends also depends on you. If you share a smile and go through life with a happy attitude, you'll connect with people very quickly. Another downside of moving to Austria is the fact that stores and shops close early. Most supermarkets close at 8pm, even though there may be exceptions. And unlike in the Netherlands, for instance, stores are generally closed on Sundays. This is the same in Switzerland and Germany, and in my opinion it would be great if shops were open longer and on Sundays as well. Smaller cities in Austria feel like ghost towns on Sundays. So make sure to buy all the things you need on Friday evening or Saturday. Surprisingly, Austria has a strong tradition for smoking. The number of smokers has decreased in recent years, but Austria remains a country with a high percentage of smokers. Also, non-heated nicotine products are popular in Austria. Worldwide, Austria ranks 17th in nicotine consumption. Up until late 2019, it was still allowed to smoke in cafes, restaurants and bars, which is hard to imagine. Luckily, now it is prohibited to smoke in dining rooms like restaurants and bars. Weather is a minor downside in my opinion, but Vienna's long winters are often mentioned on the internet. 
In Vienna, winters might be cold and long, but summers on the other hand can get really hot and dry. It's more of a continental type of climate and overall I don't really support this downside. Austria is not only Vienna and Austria has different types of climates thanks to the Alps. So at least for me personally, I don't see a big problem in the climate of Austria. Austria's national language is German. But if you are currently learning German, then don't be surprised if you have a hard time understanding the Austrians. There are many dialects in Austria which you have to get used to. And even though many people speak English, the further out of the city you go, the harder it gets to find people who speak English. Speaking German also grants you access to more jobs and allows you to connect with locals more easily. So if you are thinking of moving to Austria, then it might make sense to start learning German. And learning German also shows your willingness to integrate into Austrian society. Austria is famous for its high level of bureaucracy. It has a relatively high proportion of state-employed individuals or officers relative to its total population. But luckily nowhere near as many as in Scandinavian countries. Still, if you are planning to move to Austria, expect a lot of bureaucracy and paperwork. A sad downside of Austria is that Austria experiences a rural exodus. Many villages in more rural areas of Austria are facing heavy population declines with people moving into Austria's big cities. Today, almost every fourth Austrian lives in Vienna. While Vienna, Graz, Linz, Salzburg and Innsbruck continue to grow, rural villages are struggling to stay afloat. So if you are interested in moving to the countryside of Austria, make sure to consider this information. As always, the last downside is a bit of a fun fact. Expect aching muscles when moving to Austria. The Austrian Alps offer gorgeous ski slopes and hiking trails, so you will almost have no other choice but to engage in these activities. Moreover, expect to gain some weight while being in Austria. Not only exceptional pastries, but also world famous traditional foods like the Wiener Schnitzel are mouthwatering dishes that you will need to try. And don't forget that no Austrian will pardon you if you eat Wiener Schnitzel with sauce. So no sauce for eating Wiener Schnitzel. Independent from the downsides of moving to Austria, let us take a look at some interesting facts. Did you know the name Austria derives from a Germanic word Austro, which means East? The Alps cover 62% of the country and play a key role in shaping Austrian culture. It is here where you can find Europe's tallest waterfalls, the Krimmel waterfalls. The Austrian Alps are also home to the world's largest ice cave, which has a total length of more than 40 kilometers. Austria is the homeland of Arnold Schwarzenegger and many famous classical music composers such as Mozart, Haydn, Schubert, Strauss and many more. The oldest zoo in the world was opened in 1752 and it is located in Vienna. And a little known fact about Austria is that after World War II not only Germany but Austria as well was divided into occupation zones by the British, French, Soviets and Americans. The country was split into four and run by the Allied Commission for Austria. The capital was also divided into four and was effectively an international zone. This lasted until 1955. On October 26, 1955, the Austrian parliament passed a law of permanent neutrality. This day, October 26, is celebrated as the country's national day each year. So Austria's national day is the day when Austria declared its neutrality. And the law of permanent neutrality also explains why today Austria is not part of NATO, just like Switzerland. As always, all sources are linked in the description below. Did I forget a downside, then please let me know in the comments. Also, let me know which country I should cover next.